Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you've all been good boys and girls this year. I know I have. But apparently it doesn't matter all that much. Because I thought this was going to be the year that Santa finally brought me the rocket-propelled grenade I've been asking for since I was eight. My letter clearly stated that I wanted it for hunting, you jolly fat f***. <sighs> I'll have to save my rant on how Santa is an ATF sympathizer for another day. Because I have a story for your listening pleasure. Making great characters is a funny thing. RPGs are games where theoretically you can do whatever the hell you want and be whoever the hell you want to be. But almost everyone unanimously agrees that the best characters are the ones who are the weakest and most pathetic. The ones who, despite existing in a world with mortals who can bend the fabric of reality to their whims, struggle to swing a sword. Perhaps it's this unique brand of weakness that makes these characters so enjoyable. I don't know about all of you, but the fabric of reality does not react that well when I try to bend it around my desires. Most of the time it just ends up with a felony DUI and yet another way to disappoint my parents. But unfortunately for TTRPG players, and fortunately for us cringe enjoyers, not everyone gets the message that interesting characters need to have flaws. And it's normally up to these flawed characters to teach these perfect Mary Sues a lesson in humility. The story I have for you today is a classic legend from the old days of 4chan and stars a player who joins an online role-playing server only to show all of the Mary Sues surrounding him just how strong a weak character can be. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the dramatic and oh-so-satisfying ballad of Edgardo. Enjoy. This week's story comes to us from an anonymous user and is titled The Ballad of Edgardo. Hey, TG, you guys up for some story time? Of course you are! This is just my experience with a freeform RP a while back, and I think it's about time that I share it. It's been a long time, so sorry if some of the details are a bit hazy, but I remember the important bits. Behold, the Ballad of Edgardo. Get a hankering for some RP. Cruise a couple of forums when something catches my eye. Some kind of weird combination of stuff from Dragon Ball Z, Gurren Logon, Avatar The Last Airbender, and a few other themes from different shows. Basically, Animu, the game. Honestly, kind of a cool setting after reading through it. Superpowered dudes wander around doing their own thing, having adventures, and trying to stop evil shadows from consuming the world. Looks cool. Sign up and start making a character. Characters had attributes. Strength, speed, the usual sh**. Traits, powers chosen from a big list, and spirits, which is what you use for doing cool sh**. I had a certain number of points to spend on attributes. I maxed out strength and put some into speed, endurance, and a couple in charm. I wanted to try a brawler type guy. I'll get to why that idea was a bad one later. Look at the spirit rules before picking powers, because I want to do as much cool shit as possible. Spent spirit to activate powers. Different powers modified how spirit worked and gave it an elemental alignment, which modified damage and other crap. Basically, it lets you spend one point of spirit to get five points of fire damage. Neat! There was also raw spirit, which had no modifier, but also no elemental alignment and you couldn't be resisted. Less bang for your buck, but it could be useful. Raw spirit could also be used to raise a stat temporarily, but the higher the stat, the more spirit you had to spend. Spirit had a cap depending on your attributes. At lower levels, it was pretty low, like 10 or 20 if you got lucky. With my stat layout, I had 5. Awesome! Look through the powers list to see if I can unscrew my character. I browse through the list, and it's pretty basic stuff. Throw fire, control shadows, frost breath, whatever. It also had mundane powers like sword fighting and free running. I choose unarmed combat right off the bat cause I want to punch people. Still a bad idea. I keep looking and see something interesting tucked away on the list. Overflowing spirit. Pretty impressive points wise for a simple power but my eyes lit up at what it did. Removes the spirit cap. Plus some other crap which I glanced over at the time, but more on that in a bit. Oh f now that's pretty abusable. Figure that everyone takes it, so I take it too. I take Battle Cry for a spirit buff and to blow the last of my power points. Character is pretty much done. I named him Edgardo because it sounded cool at the time. 
Ready to go, Edgardo the Brawler sets out on his quest to... do whatever. I start in the central town where everyone else hangs out and introduce myself. I describe him as hot-blooded, hot-tempered, courageous, and always itching for adventure. Honestly, a pretty flat character, but whatever, I thought he was okay. Promptly get laughed at for making such a naive and lowbrow character. Apparently, everyone has made brooding anti-heroes who sit in dark corners and don't really do much of anything. I swear the tavern had to be some kind of 8th dimensional shape because everyone was in their own f***ing corner away from everyone else. But the last straw came from some asshole drinking his wine at the bar. Edgardo is such a stupid name anyway. Motherfucker. Edgardo did not walk in there to be mocked by a bunch of trench coat wearing pricks that are trying to be edgier than a goddamn razor blade factory. I take a swing and quickly discover that I am well and truly f***ed. Apparently, unarmed combat was hosed from the start, as fists don't do shit against even the lightest armor, and don't get damage multipliers. Fantastic. Blow a spirit point just to get past his armor and do single digit damage. Fucker laughs and stands up. Care to try again, you pathetic wretch? I use battle cry. Can't think of anything, so I go with Bonsai! and use the rest of my spirit points. Nothing. He dodges, draws his sword, and gives an eye-rolling disappear before he blasts me out of the tavern with sword lightning whatever the f He spends one spirit for that, and I nearly get one shot, even with a good amount of endurance. Fucking what? So while I'm bleeding out on the side of the road, I take the time to browse some other characters. First off is Sword Lightning Asshole, basically the same level as me, but better in every way. Powers are better, higher spirit, good stats. More my fault, really, because I f***ed up character creation. I browse more characters, and I notice something. No one has overflowing spirit. No one. I ask why. Turns out that if you make a decent character, you have more than enough spirit to do whatever the f*** you want. Even the highest level characters only have about a 100 cap, and it's rare to get even halfway down that in a normal fight. And then there was the part that I skipped over. Overflowing spirits prevented you from taking elemental powers. Basically, you were stuck using raw spirit, which was sh Elemental Spirit had damage modifiers so high that even if you resisted it, you still took a good amount of damage. Nido Burrito. Edgardo was basically useless against everything. Since I was screwed, I PM'd a mod to see if I could make a new character that wasn't crippled beyond belief. Lol, deal with it. You made it. You play it. So, recap. Everyone's a pretentious f**kwad, the mods don't give a shit, and Edgardo is beyond worthless. Great start. I pick myself out of the dirt and limp away to get myself healed. Nope, I was broke, so I couldn't get shit. I'd have to sit my ass down and wait to heal naturally, which could take days. F**k that, I'm already tired of this shit, so I make an attempt to steal a potion. <laughs> no. Enter Militant Zero. Yes, that was his name, I cringed too. Omnipotent character number 4,782 could do anything he wanted because he had been with the RP the longest. I also suspect that he sucked off the admin, but whatever. Teleports to me instantly. I can't do shit because I'm basically dead on my feet. He lifts me into the air with magic psychic bullshit so I can't even run. He starts going on a long speech about crime and how evildoers should be punished and how he's the best and blah, blah, blah. He gives me an ultimatum. Beg me for mercy, and I might let you stay in this town. Otherwise, I will throw you to the shadows. F**k no, Edgardo does not beg. I struggle, swear, spit, and basically do everything I can to get out of this. Nope. I get thrown through the roof of the building I was in and soar all the way out into the wilderness. Well, I'm dead. Fortunately, newbies get one free revive, and I cash mine in. Zero gets super fucking butt mad about it and says I'm dead for good because he says so and wham. I call him out on his bullshit, but I immediately get shot down by everyone in the community. Suddenly, I'm the bad guy for trying to steal and picking a fight. Yeah, okay. 
Mods calm everyone down and say that I'm alive with one health in the wilderness. Last bit of charity I'm getting, I won't even survive the night. But then I met a guy called Squid. Beast folk were a thing, so people could have cat girls and wolf men and shit like that. A guy called Squid was, well, part squid. Literally just a big muscly dude with a squid for a head. And yes, his full name was a guy called Squid, and he insisted on everyone calling him that. He was a pretty cool dude. He ran into the same troubles that I did. Was a punchy guy like myself, but he punched people with fire. He helped me out and shared a potion, and was generally a bro. We both decided to stick together and train out here because we both needed to get a lot stronger before we headed back into town. It wasn't going to be nearly that easy. Got to nighttime and me and Squid set up camp in a cave. Suddenly shadows appear because mod bullshit and zero wind enough that I was still alive. I was still pretty fucked up, but I could hold my own and Squid was in perfect shape. Still, we barely survived, mainly because of Squid's fire damage being beastly. We both agreed that we wouldn't survive another fight like that, so we hightailed it out of there and back to town. Yeah, no. Invisible force field prevented us from getting back in, and I wasn't surprised. Looked on the map and found a nearby town to hole up in. It'd take a couple of days to get there though, and we were both out of supplies. Neither of us saw any other way, so we got to walkin'. Edgardo and a guy called Squid, just two guys on the road to adventure. Or the road to not dying horribly and somehow getting petty revenge, but whatever. Normally when people traveled, there were random events that could either be good or bad for you. It was up to how much the mods liked you, really. The mods did not like Squid or Edgardo. If we got something good, they'd find some way to take it away from us. We saved a lady from bandits on the first day, and by that I mean we kicked the bandits in the nuts, grabbed the lady, and ran like hell. That night, she prison shanked Squid, took what little shit we had gathered, and bailed. When I tried to chase her, she poofed. Gone. Neato burrito. I really don't know why we kept going after that. It was obvious that we were unwanted, so we really should have just quit. I think we were both waiting on the other one to give in first. I didn't want to admit defeat, and I know Squid didn't want to either. We just had to press on, no matter what. Even when we met Sword Lightning Guy again. It had already been a few days on the road and we kept getting shit on. Wolves, rain, another shadow attack. Still don't know how we lived, but we scraped together either by running the fuck away or by sheer luck and winning a fight. One more day of traveling and we'd be at the village. We were so close that we could taste it. But then the dick from the tavern showed up blocking the road. Never mind how he got ahead of us, but he was and we just had to take it. Well, well, if it isn't the wretch from the tavern. And he picked himself up a side dish too. <laughs> Squid tells him to take a hike and let us through. But this is a toll road. You have to pay me to pass, let's say, hmm, a thousand gold. Fucking what? I tell him that he's full of shit and nobody has that much money. Oh, what a shame. Then you have to pay with your lives. He pulls his sword and blasts Squid, who somehow powers through it. This gives me a chance to get up close and, well, I've established that I can do fuck all against this guy. I'm banged up pretty good and fists don't do shit. Only thing I have left is spirit. A metric ass ton of spirit. See, as we were traveling, I was hoarding points. Well, not intentionally. I gained some every day like everyone else, and every time Squid and I killed something, we got a little bit more. Squid was spending his spirit left and right, and I wasn't. And since I had overflowing spirit, I had a lot more points than I had any right to have at my level. Even if raw spirit was crap, a lot of crap could still wreck someone's day. Edgardo had a chance. A slim chance, but it was better than nothing. Bonsai! I used all of that spirit and I crouched for an uppercut. Sword guy doesn't give a shit and he actually laughs in my face and doesn't even make an attempt to dodge. You're kidding, right? We've been through this. You can't hurt me. <laughs> You're the only one laughing, asshole. My fist connects with his chin, and so does all of that raw spirit. Didn't do nearly as much damage as an elemental attack would, but it was still enough to knock him on his ass, which gave Squid the perfect setup. He jumped on Sword Guy and blew all of his spirit too. Where there was once a face, there was now a smoking crater. 
Sword Guy died, and to two underdogs to boot. Predictably, he pitched a fit, and so did the rest of the players. We were murderers and outlaws and generally horrible, horrible people for deciding not to deal with this bullshit anymore. Me and Squid did not give a single f We had earned our first actual victory. Sure, we were nearly dead, defenseless, and we still had to make it to the village, but we won. Things were looking up, at least for a little while. And we still had to worry about Zero and his crap. You see, Zero was some kind of king or tyrant overlord or whatever, and this village was his little authority zone. So when we finally arrive at the village, guess what special surprise is waiting for us? If you guessed Invisible Immune to Everything Force Field, congratulations, give yourself a gold star. And for good measure, he teleports and taunts us, saying that he'll follow us until we're broken and mad and shut the f up already. He cackles and teleports away, and Squid falls to his knees. He's had enough. We came all this way, all for nothing. Sure, we beat someone, but he'd be rezzed and in perfect health the next day. So, what do we do now? <laughs> Squid was ready to quit. Edgardo wouldn't have it. We train, Squid. We train. We hiked up a nice grassy hill near the village and then proceeded to beat the ever-loving crap out of each other. Whenever you got into a fight, you got a couple of points towards leveling, win or lose. The only problem is that most characters couldn't spar against another as they'd kill each other pretty quickly. Elemental attacks and weapons combined had a huge damage multiplier, so sparring would quickly end up with people dead. We didn't have any weapons, and unarmed combat could take days of wailing on someone to actually kill them. The only reason that Squid was alright was because he was using his firepower. So as long as we didn't use any spirit, we could beat each other silly, pass out, wait a while to heal, and do it all over again. It was stupid, it was cheesy, and it pissed everyone off, but it f***ing worked. Some said that the shadows would attack us, but we were just close enough to the village that they couldn't. I'm still not sure why Zero or even the mods let us get away with this shit. I guess they didn't see it as anything to actually be worried about. Eventually, we leveled up, though. It was a slow process, and there were better ways of leveling, but this was all we had. Plus, it gave me another f ton of spirit points. Edgardo pumped up strength first, and then evenly distributed the rest. I got a power to double the rate at which he gained spirit per day. I had a plan. Squid just buffed his fire fists. It was a good way to go. Now, just to find somewhere to rest up properly, somewhere to regroup. We couldn't just stay and wail on each other for another level. We had gotten lucky the first time, but now there was a talk of a few other players jumping us. We had to move. Neither of us knew where the hell we were going or what we were doing. We just hit the road and tried to get as far away from Zero and everyone else as we could. The mods f***ed with us for the first few days, but eventually they just got bored and left us alone. Sometimes they'd throw a few shadows our way, but it was nothing that we couldn't handle. Random events just stopped happening for us. I think it was mainly due to us not really bugging anyone anymore. We were just kind of doing our own thing, so everyone sort of forgot about us. Except Zero. He was still mighty pissy about me living this long. I have no idea what his deal was. Maybe it was just the challenge to his authority that I represented. Or maybe he was just a colossal prick. Either way, once we left his authority zone or whatever, he sent one of his lackeys after us. A quick look at his character sheet, and I knew how much Zero hated us. His name was Golden Harl, and the dude was basically invincible. Magic armor let him resist all elements massively, plus it was super light so he could fly around and do his ninja flippy shit. He could heal himself completely by spending a couple of spirits, and his spirit refreshed basically whenever he wanted it to. It was official, the mods didn't give a shit. Oh, and we were screwed too. All we could do was keep going forward and hope that he didn't catch up to us. He did, and damn quick too. He met us while we were traveling along a gorge and promptly tried to knock me over the side. Golden Harl wasn't f***ing around, no words, only pain. He meant business. I barely managed to dodge him, which was, of course, met with public outcry. But I was dangerously close to the edge. Squid tried a fire punch with a couple of spirit behind it. No cell, and Golden Harl got a free counterattack because f*** you, he's Golden Harl. Squid is knocked down, but he gave me an opening. 
I grabbed Golden Harl by his waist and gave him a suplex. My high strength let me get in a few points of damage and put me in a better position. It didn't really matter though, as he was back up and fully healed a second later. I helped Squid up, but we were pretty much already dead. Golden Harl finally spoke up. Any last words? Banzai! The f***er was wide open, and his back was at the edge of the cliff, too. A quick PM to Squid was all it took, and the quick plan went off like clockwork. Squid ran to version, going high for a fire punch to the face. Golden Harl didn't bother to dodge. He was invincible after all. But he forgot one thing. Raw spirit can't be resisted. Edgardo went in for a gut punch with all that built-up spirit from the training and the road. Now, it wasn't enough to kill Golden Harl, not by a long shot, but it was enough to knock him backwards, and that last step was a doozy. Golden Harl fell down into the canyon, and we only stayed long enough to hear the dull thud of him hitting the ground. I could practically hear Zero grinding his teeth to powder as he tattled to the mods. Surprisingly, I barely heard anything from Golden Harl's player. Just a simple PM saying, Well played. I almost felt sorry that he had to meet his end like that. After that, we were all pretty much free to keep going until we hit another village. Zero couldn't get to us here, so no shield and no bullshit. We could finally rest. Well, maybe. We were still broke. And there was a small army of players after us. Apparently, Golden Harl was a pretty popular character, and by killing him, we were now on the top of everyone's hit list. Fantastic. Squid slept in an alley, and I kept watch, trying to get a plan together. We basically had come to some sort of unspoken agreement. Squid was tired of Zero's shit, and so was I. We both wanted him dead and broken. The problem was that two low-level characters could do f**k all against this guy. His level was literally listed as an infinity sign. When Squid took watch, I read over the fluff of the setting, looking for something, anything that could help us. I found it in the city of Haven. Haven was the second biggest city in the setting, just barely smaller than Zero's place. It was kind of a big deal though. See, it was home to the Spirit Well. It was a font of power that everyone flocked to. As long as you were in Haven, your spirit points recharged instantly up to your cap. I didn't have a cap. I still wonder how anybody in their right mind missed this little detail of overflowing spirit. It was set up so perfectly. Maybe I was being a massive that guy for exploiting this like I did, but I don't really care. Everyone but a few people were complete assholes and I wanted their little club destroyed. It was petty, it was stupid, and it probably hurt a few people. But Edgardo had a mission, and a guy called Squid was gonna help him see it through. If they ever got to Haven in one piece. I swear we were the only two people following the traveling rules, because the horde of players chasing us caught up to us a lot quicker than they should have. We had half a day of rest before we had to hit the road again. I was useless without a buildup of spirit, and Squid could only fend off so many before he'd die. The only route to Haven was a long, winding road through the mountains, and we'd be ambushed if we tried to set up camp anywhere. It'd take too long, and time was not on our side. So Edgardo had a crazy idea. What if they climbed over the mountains? It was basically suicide as the random events were especially harsh in that terrain. No one would follow us. After all, something might happen to their super special characters. The mods were ignoring us. Everyone was so pissed off at us, but in the grand scheme of things, we hadn't really done anything major. We've killed a grand total of two characters through sheer luck and broken mechanics, and I had basically given their idol Zero a giant middle finger for simply surviving as long as I had. And Zero could only suck so much c So we started climbing, making rolls and getting through by the skin of our teeth. Every once in a while a mod would glance over and make shit hard for us, but overall we didn't have that much trouble. That's because trouble was waiting for us on the other side of the mountain. From our perch, we got a view of the players coming for us. There was no way we could take them all, and if we waited, they'd just get to Haven and wait for us there. And then there was the guy waiting just underneath us. Golden Harl, back from the dead. They must have fished him out of the canyon and had him rezzed, or maybe he survived the fall and healed. Who knows? We know he saw us, but he didn't move. He could have just jumped up at any time he wanted and murdered us right then and there. But he didn't. After a while, Squid got tired of waiting. 
He climbed down and Edgardo followed him to have his back in case things went south. Squid asked him what he wanted. Golden Harl just wanted to talk. Turns out that he had more to this story than we knew about. Golden Harl was in this RP just as long as Zero was, and frankly, he was tired of Zero's shit. Golden Harl earned everything he had and didn't need to resort to whining to the mods to get what he wanted. When we asked why he tried to kill us, he said it was either follow Zero's order or get his own shit shoved in. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, Golden Harl just couldn't compete, mainly because Zero could do whatever the fuck he wanted and no one batted an eye. After we killed him, he was basically done. He was satisfied with the ending he got, but instead, Zero revived him and sent him to kill us again. Golden Harl had other plans, though. Squid was suspicious, but I believed him. I'm still not sure why, maybe I was desperate, but I told him our plan. Technically, I told everyone our plan, as it was one of the public threads. I'm an idiot, sue me. Golden Harl said he could get us to Haven. His story was over, and he ceased giving a single f about what anyone else would say about this. He had only one condition. We had to promise that we'd kill Zero and end this once and for all. Edgardo and Squid agreed. This was our only shot, and we weren't about to throw it away. A massive shitstorm erupted from the player base as we joined up with Golden Harl. Zero called him a traitor to everything the RP stood for, and everyone made such a fuss that the mods nearly banned the guy. Golden Harl had a bit of sway with the mods too, and he got lucky as shit when they took his side when he pointed out that he had done nothing wrong. With the mods appeased, that just left the army of players gunning for us. The second we hit the road, they were on us. There was no f***ing around anymore, and the travel rules were basically out of the picture. A horde of superpowered loners and misfits charged towards us, flinging fire and lightning and all manner of weapons, all of them driven by their singular hatred of Edgardo, a guy called Squid, and the traitor Golden Harl. Golden Harl weathered the tide, taking kunai and fireballs and shadow spears without so much as flinching, because f you, he's Golden Harl. Me and Squid ran behind Golden Harl as he cleared a path, getting us to the other side of the army. As we kept going down the path, Golden Harl stayed behind, covering our escape. To this day, I do not know if he survived or not, but I will never forget his bravery. Since everyone else was doing it, we ignored the travel rules ourselves, arriving in Haven near instantly. Zero bitched, and nobody heard him. There was one last obstacle, though. One last player. Kane, the Shadowmancer. This f***ing guy. He had the power to let him control Shadow. His interpretation of what this actually did was very, very loose. And since he was in Haven, he could abuse this like nobody's business. As soon as we set foot in this city, Squid and me instantly get paralyzed. We call him out on his bullshit, not sure why. I control the darkness in everyone's hearts. The darkness in everyone's soul. <sighs> you are mine. Oh, eat a bag of dicks. Squid tells him that's not how it works. Kane isn't listening because it's his power and he says that's how it works and wham. Meanwhile, I just sit back and ask myself a question. Why can't I hold all this spirit? Spend infinite spirit and break Kane's hold. Brace for whining. How? You can't resist me. The darkness is in everyone's heart. Okay, now it's Edgardo's turn to be cheesy. You are wrong. My soul is a shining beacon, filled with a light and a burning hope that no shadow can touch. It is a pinpoint of justice, a shining star that will deliver freedom to the universe. I will root out the darkness, the evil of this land. No shadow will be spared my light. Kane just can't comprehend how he's about to lose, and he tries the shadow paralysis thing again. No cell, buddy. I still got infinite spirit. Who the hell do you think you're dealing with? Banzai! Swift uppercut. Battle cry, unlimited raw spirit punch. Kane gets punched into the sun. Cue shit being lost by absolutely everyone again. Squid is okay, and we rest up and figure out our next move. My ultra power only works if I'm in Haven, so that doesn't do us a lot of good. 
Squid finds out that Haven's unlimited spirit effect lingers for a day after we leave, and Zero is weeks away in his city. More players are on their way to Haven, and even though I have infinite spirit, I can only use it to punch people. I will get killed eventually. We're basically stuck, until I notice that we have leveled up. I don't really give a f about my stats at this point, but there's a power that really catches my eye. Teleportation. I have exactly enough points to purchase it. Normally I wouldn't have enough spirit to use it, but Haven, so it works. Squid upgraded his fire punch. It was still a good way to go. I tell Squid that he can stay behind, that this is going to be dangerous and we might not come back. He tells me that he's with me to the end and he intends to see this thing through. And he's got my back no matter what. In the middle of town square, Edgardo and a guy called Squid shared a sweaty, shirtless, muscly, manly hug for all the world to see. It was super homo. Actually, we just had to be touching so I could teleport us both, but shut up. We arrived outside the city, and the shield was still up. Zero mocked us, saying that he was invincible behind his wall and that we couldn't do anything. This shield can withstand 1,000 times the force of anything you could possibly throw at it. People just keep forgetting. Raw spirit can't be resisted by anything. I'll just have to hit it a thousand and one times harder! Bonsai! I still flinch whenever I remember typing that. So damn cheesy. One more battle cry, blow infinite spirit and... Nothing. Not a damn thing. Zero refused to post an actual RP after that, and I think he had a stroke or something. He posted plenty in the discussion threads though. Everyone did. The entire community spammed the forums, declaring that I should be banned, flayed, and hung for my shenanigans. The next day when I tried to log in, I found that the forums had been shut down due to popular opinion. I never saw Squid after that. We had never exchanged emails or anything. I like to think that Edgardo is still frozen in that moment in time. His fist crashing through the shield and connecting with Zero's big, stupid face. And Edgardo is smiling. He won. He, Squid, and Golden Harl. They won. End of story. And thus concludes the ballad of the hero we didn't need, but the one we deserved, Edgardo. God, I just love it when the sweaty, muscular men of the world come out on top in the most heterosexual way possible. Now, I will say I don't have any experience with any roleplay servers or anything like that, but whenever I play D&D, I consider myself to be a Chad martial class enjoyer. So, I have a soft spot for characters that can stand shoulder to shoulder with beings who can manipulate the fabric of the universe, even though their whole philosophy towards life is, punch it, punch it real good. And isn't that the true meaning of Christmas? I don't know, man. All I know is that if I ever got exposed to a surplus of Christmas cheer in my heart, Heart grew three sizes, I would probably get a blood clot and die, and that would make Christmas dinner really awkward. But you know what I can never get upset about a surplus of? Fan art! That's right, how about we take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drake. This week's fan art comes from viewer Miko Amai and depicts the Drake and his kobold minion Larry wishing you and all the Den of the Drake community a happy holiday season. I wish for all of you this holiday season to find both peace and cringe in your stocking. Ho ho ho! Now what would you like for Christmas, little guy? For you to remove me from your lamp. Ah, oh, come on, little buddy. I want to see some Christmas spirit from you if we're going to be making the most badass Christmas card the internet's ever seen. I'm Jewish. Gesundheit. Thank you again, Miko Amai, for submitting your art. If you'd like to see your fan art featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my About section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and send in your fan art. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.